Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Shall we bow down and pray? Hallelujah. Our Father in heaven, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, our Lord, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we continue, Lord, to honor you, to praise you, and worship you, O Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to hear your word. And Lord, allow us to freely hear you, Lord God, this morning. Open our hearts to be receptive to your word. And it is our prayer, Lord God, to transform our lives for your glory and for your honor alone. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. Praise God. As we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we must continue to live or to walk in Him. We must continue to live or to walk in Him, to remain firm with our faith, even though challenges may come in our lives. Amen? The church at Colossae is being infiltrated by a lot of heresies. These are new ideas or beliefs contradicting to the teachings of the Lord. So ito po mga heresies na ito ay mga uh, taliwas sa tunuturo ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Taliwas against the gospel of our Lord Jesus. That is why si Epapras ay bumisita kay Paul upang i-report ang mga bagay na ito and which eventually led to Apostle Paul to have written the epistle to the Colossians. So Apostle Paul reminded them of the sufficiency and the supremacy of our Lord Jesus, whom they believed in and received. So kagaya po natin, tayo na nang palatay sa Panginoon, tinanggap natin siya, gayon din ang mga taga Colossae. But, Nagkakaroon sila ng malaking challenge sapagkat ang church o ang iglesia ay napapasukan ng mga, ling, ng mga maling katuruan. So, he encouraged the Colossians to remain in the gospel. Na siya namang ding ibinahagi ni Epapras. Na siya namang na-evangelize ni Apostle Paul no? when he was in Ephesus. No, sa kanyang tatlong taong pag minister sa Ephesus. Okay? And then, in his letter, or in his epistles to the Colossians, he reputed the heresies infiltrating the church. Some of these heresies, ay makikita natin, some of these uh, Colossian heresies are yung tinatawag na ceremonialism. In uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. So there were, there were new uh, Gentile converts at the time that they were being persuaded you know, na magpa-circumcise in order for them to be saved. So Apostle Paul is telling the Colossians that our salvation is not by works. Amen? Our salvation is through faith in Christ Jesus. What Jesus has done on the cross is enough for us to be saved. Amen? So, yun din po ang ating paniniwala, di po ba? Sa Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. Ano po sabi doon? Tayo po ay iniligtas dahil sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Sa pamamagitan ng ating pananampalataya sa Kanya, hindi sa pamamagitan ng gawa upang walang sino man sa atin ang makapagmalaki sa Diyos. Amen. What Jesus has done on the cross by sacrificing His life on the cross is enough for us to be saved. All we need to do is to believe in Him. And then there are also some heresies na sinasabi nila na uh, Huwag kang kumain na to, huwag kang uminim na to. No? Mawawala ang iyong salvation. No? Sabi po doon, sa Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or about a religious festival, a new moon, 
or Sabbath day. These are the shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ Jesus. Again, in emphasize dito ni Apostle Paul na hindi pa magitan ng mga gawa tayo maliligtas. Hindi pa magitan ng paghawak o pagtikim ng mga bagay na ito. Mawawala yung salvation natin. O magkakarabalin to na yung ating kaligtasan sa Panginoon. He is just encouraging the Colossians believers or the, Colo- the believers at Colossae to remain faithful to the Lord, to focus our eyes on the Lord, what He has done for us. Sabi nga ng Panginoong Isus, hindi naman yung pumapasok sa bibig natin ang nagpapasama sa atin, kundi yung lumalabas sa ating bibig. Amen. So, binabantayan po ba natin yung mga salitang lumalabas sa ating bibig? Ito yung nagpapasama sa atin. Amen. So, yung mga marites dyan, yung mga tolits dyan, ingat-ingat po tayo. Jesus Christ sacrifice on the cross is enough. Sabi nyo nga po, Jesus Christ sacrifice is enough. Is enough for our salvation. Ang ating participation is just to believe on what the Lord has done on the cross. Another heresy of the Colossians is yung uh, ascetic, ascetism. Yun nga yung sinasabi ko kanina, na huwag kang hawak nito, huwag kang hawak nito. No? It was said in uh, 21 and 23. Okay? Pwede po bang pakibasa natin? Ready? One, two, and three. Amen. Is our faith based on human commands or human traditions or human teachings? Yung mga sinasabi na lang sabi-sabi? No? Meron pa tayong mga ganyang pananampalataya, mga kapatid? Our faith should be based on the Word of God. Amen. Numinsan na napag-uusapan namin last time, when it comes to sa mga lamay-lamay sa patay, di ba? maraming bawal. Bawal magwalis, bawal maligo, bawal umiyak doon sa ataol. So maraming bawal that we are baseless. Wala pong kinalaman sa ating pananampalataya sa Panginoon. Huwag daw maghahatid kasi may susunod. <laughs> Ang buhay po natin ay nasa Panginoon. Amen? The Bible tells us na meron tayong time to, bo- to be born and time to die. Okay? So, another heresy ng mga taga-Colossian ay yung pag-worship sa mga angels. Huh? Ito po ay tahasang ipinagbabawal ng salita ng Panginoon. Because only God is worthy to be worshipped. Amen? Sabi po dun sa verse 18, chapter 2, Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into deal a great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. And then sinasabi din ng Revelation chapter 2, verse, uh, 22, verse 8, Mismo yung angel, nag siya to be worshipped. When Apostle John ay nakita niya ang angel, he fell down and worshipped the angel. Ano pong sabi ng angel sa kanya? Sa so verse 9, But he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and of your brethren and the prophets of those who heed the words of this book. Worship God. So walang ibang karapat-dapat na sambahin kundi ang ating Diyos. Amen? Wala na pong iba. Amen? Paul also encouraged the Colossians to continue to live or walk in Christ just as they received Jesus Christ as their Lord, as their Messiah. Amen? So, in-encourage niya ang mga taga-Colossians 
that only Jesus is worthy to be worshipped, that only Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is enough for our salvation. And he also emphasizes the supremacy and the sufficiency of the Lord Jesus. No? Sabi niya po doon sa verse 6 sa NIB, So then, just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him. Sa ESV version, ang sabi po dyan, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus as the, as the Lord, so walk in Him. The word then, or the word therefore, refers to the previous passages no? na sinasabi ni Apostle Paul that we could find in the Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 20 about the supremacy, about the sufficiency of the Lord Jesus. Basahin po natin responsibly. I will start in verse 15. Okay, verse 15. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. 16. And for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Verse 18. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning of the firstborn from among the dead. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. And in 20. Amen. Amen. So, only from these verses, no? from uh, verses 15 to 20, we could learn a lot of things about the supremacy, about the divinity, the deity of our Lord Jesus. No? Sabi po dyan, in verse 15, He is the Son of God. He is God, therefore, and worthy to be praised, worthy to be honored, worthy to be worshipped. He is the image of invisible God that through Him, He revealed or make known Himself to us all. Dati hindi natin kilala ang Panginoon, pero it's because of the Lord Jesus Christ, He Himself is the image, the invisible image of God. He represented God here on earth. Amen. So dahil sa Panginoong Yesus, nakilala natin kung sino ang Ama. Number three, in verse 16, he is the creator. In Him, all things were created. Walang anumang bagay na nalilang dito sa mundo na walang kinalaman ng ating Panginoong Yesus. He is co-creator with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. So binibigyan din ni Apostle Paul ang divinity, ang deity ng ating Panginoong Diyos, ang ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo. And the number four, He is eternal God. Sabi dun sa verse 16 or verse 17, He is before all things. Siya po ay nung, nung unang-una pa, na wala pa ang lahat ng mga bagay na ito, Jesus Christ Himself already existed. Remember, He is the Alpha and Omega, Omega the beginning and the end. Amen? And then we could also learn that He is the sustainer of all things. Verse 17, that in Him, all things hold together. The reason why we are still alive, it's because of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The reason why we are still healthy, it's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the sustainer of all things. Number six, He is the head of the church. No? Siya po ang ulo ng iglesia. Lahat po tayo ay part of the body of Christ and therefore we all have function in the body of Christ. And Jesus Christ as the head, siya ang ating ulo, siya ang ating Panginoon. He is the founder of all the churches all over the world. Amen? Yung mga founding uh, pastors ng mga churches ay ginamit lamang sila ng Panginoon. No? Ang ANCF ay... Ginamit ng Panginoon, sina Pastor Hill, sila Pastor Ness, Pastor Ernie, na iti, itayo ang church na ito. But the founder himself is no other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. 
And then number seven, He is the Christ. His blood shed on the cross saved us from our sin. Amen. Ginawa ng Panginoon yung pinakamahirap na bagay, na parte. Ang participation natin is just to accept, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, in what He has done on the cross. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul reminded the Colossians of this truth about the Lord Jesus, whom they received as their Lord and Savior. Kaparehas natin, mga kapatid, tinanggap natin ang ating Panginoon bilang ating tagapagligtas at Panginoon ng ating buhay. No? Meron po ba dito na tinanggap lang ang Panginoon bilang kanyang tagapagligtas pero hindi Panginoon ang kanyang buhay? Meron ba bang ganun? No? Tinatanggap lang kung ano yung pabor. Pabor na ikaw ay iligtas ng Panginoon pero hindi ka nagpapasakop. Kagaya ng kaninang uh, exhortation ni Sister Kat. No? Surrender to God. When we say Jesus Christ is our Lord, then our life should be fully surrendered to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Have we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? Amen. Really? Praise God. Having received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we must now live. We must now walk in Him. No? We started by accepting Him as our Lord and Savior through faith. Now we are encouraged to live with it, to walk in Him, meaning we need to keep on going. Amen? We need to continue. We need to grow in faith in the Lord Jesus. Amen? This is what to live or to walk meant by. To continue. To keep on going with our faith. To grow in our faith. In the Lord Jesus. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. We are not called just to believe. We are not called just to one time surrender our lives. But we are also called to keep on going. To continue in our faith. To grow in our faith. To live a life holy and pleasing to God. Just like what we have heard last Friday. Amen? Sabihin niyo po sa inyong katabi, sa kaliwa at sa kanan, walk in Christ. Amen? 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 1, Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you, in the Lord Jesus, that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. Amen. We are called to do more than believe, but to walk in God, to please God in everything we do. Amen. Hallelujah. There are at least four keys that I would like to share with you that we could learn from this passage. How to walk in Christ. So madali lang, nabasa na po natin kanina. Four keys to be rooted in Christ, to be built up in Jesus Christ, to be strengthened in the faith in Christ Jesus, and to be thankful in Christ Jesus. So let's start with number one. Be rooted in Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul gave the Colossians the analogy of being rooted in Christ Jesus. Being rooted like a tree. The roots of a tree are very important. They provide both the foundation and support which the tree needs to remain standing. Kapag mahina ang ating ugat, Pagdaan ng bagyo, sigurado tumba. But, the roots are also how the tree draws up nourishment and water from the soil so that the tree can keep on living and growing. 
So hindi lang pinapatibay ng mga ugat ang puno, kundi siya din ang nagsusupply ng mga nutrients na kailangan upang patuloy na lumago, mamunga. Like the trees depends upon its roots, then we, believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, should also depend in Christ. He must be the foundation, the source and nutrition for our faith. God should be the source of our love, our goodness, our kindness, our strength, uh, our strength, our understanding to the people around us. Like the trees, busy keeping their roots deeper and wider, non-stop. So araw-araw lumalago, lumalalim yung mga ugat ng mga puno. We should do the same. Never stop to deepen, deepening our roots in Christ Jesus. And how are we going to do that? Letter A, be rooted in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Make sure that we have the right relationship with the Lord. So kung wala ka pang relationship sa Panginoong Yesus, hindi mo pa siya tinatanggap bilang iyong Panginoon at tagapagligtas. It's about time. Because you cannot be rooted in Christ Jesus if you haven't received Him as your Lord and Savior. We need to deepen our relationship with God. As we have received Him as our Lord and Savior, continue to be rooted in Him. Spend time with Him. Quality time with Him. Amen? In our relationship, if you want to, uh, to build your relationship stronger, to become uh, your relationship stronger with your spouse, with your friends, you should spend time, quality time with them. Amen? Same thing with the Lord. We need to spend quality time with Him in prayer. Amen. Let's have fellowship with fellow believers that we can hear the words of God. That we could hear encouragement from the Lord. Amen. We need to spend time with Him in His Word. Amen. That will lead us to point letter B. To be rooted in the Word of God. The Word of God tells us who Jesus is, who is the Lord, what He has done for us, what He is capable to do for our lives. We need to know, we need to know Him more and more. Sabi nga po ng isang great theologian, si J.I. Packer, who once said, The more you know God, the more you want to know Him. Pag nakikilala mo ang Panginoon, mas gusto mo pa siyang makilala. Mas lumalalim pa yung desire natin to know Him more. We need to be rooted in the Word of God. Because the Word of God, ang siya nagpapatatag ng ating pananampalataya sa Panginoon. Diba? Sinasabi po ng Romans 10.17, Consequently, faith comes... From hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. We need to meditate. When we want to be rooted in the word of God, we spend time reading the word of God or hearing the word of God. We need to spend time meditating the word of God. No, kagaya po na sinasabi ng Panginoon kay Joshua. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate it night and day. At ang pangako ng Panginoon, there is a promise. And be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Now each time that God wants us to do something for Him, He's always willing to bless us. Amen? We need to put the Word of God into practice. We are not just mere Uh, listeners of the word, but we should be doers of the word of God. Amen? Sabi po sa Matthew chapter, 20, chapter 7, verses 24 to 25. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built 
his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Amen. We need to be rooted in the word of God. So even challenges may come into our lives, we will remain firm in our faith. Amen. This is what Apostle Paul is encouraging the, uh, the Colosse or the Christian at Colosse to be rooted in the word of God, to be rooted in their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, who is divine, who is supreme, you know, based on the uh, verses that we have heard earlier. And if we are rooted in the word of God, in the word of, in the word of Christ, we cannot be easily deceived by heresies, by new ideas or philosophies or teachings like the Colossae or like the Colossians. We will remain firm with our faith. Amen? Somebody would tell us, no, Jesus Christ, He's not a, he's not a God. He's not God. And then if you, if you don't read your Bible, Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, you are not sure of your faith because you are not rooted with the Word of God. The Word of God tells us that Jesus is God. He is the Son of God. He is a co-creator of God the Father and the Holy Spirit. No? He is eternal. Kagaya na nabasa natin kanina. That, this is the reason why Apostle Paul has established the supremacy of Jesus Christ before giving these keys for them to walk on or to live by. The reason why we, we are encouraged by the Word of God to be rooted in the Word of God so that we will not be deceived by any new teachings contradicting to the gospel of Jesus Christ. As I said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, Pwede po ba natin pakibasa? Ready? One, two, and three. Amen. So, hindi na tayo madaling mahihikayat ng mga ibang doktrina apart from the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Apart from what is written in the Bible. Number two, to walk in Christ or to live in Christ, we need to be built up in Christ Jesus. So another analogy was uh, used by Apostle Paul, analogy of like building a building. <laughs> building a building. <laughs> Constructing a building. Amen? Amen? Making sure of a foundation and which become higher and higher until it reaches the designed number of floors. So like Christians, those who receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we must be built up in Christ Jesus. No? The verb built up, according to thesaurus.com, means to amplify, means to boost, to develop, to enhance, to expand or to improve or to increase or to grow. So we need to be built up in Christ. Meaning our faith should be growing and growing each day. Growing up in our faith. Yes, we are growing older every now and then. Every day we are getting older. But at the same time, we should be growing up with our faith in the Lord. Amen. We must continue growing spiritually. Amen. Could you tell to your uh, to the person next to you, left and right, please grow up. <laughs> Being built up in Christ is to be more like him. Again, mga kapatid, being built up in Christ means to be more like Him. To be more like Him 
in holiness. To be more like Him in love. To be more like Him in our attitude. To be more like Him in obedience. Tell to the person next to you, be Christ-like. He came here on earth like us. He came here on earth though He is God. He became human like us. He lived as an, he lived as an example for us to follow. So, wala tayong ibang tutularan kundi ang ating Panginoong Yesus lamang. Let us focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Sapagkat, if we look unto others, they may disappoint us at one time, at some point. But if we focus our eyes, fixing our eyes unto Jesus, the perfecter and finisher of our faith, we will not be discouraged. We will not go wrong. We will not be disappointed. Amen? So let us build up our lives, our faith in Christ Jesus. Amen? Being built up is also to build up others. So we can say that we are already built up in Christ if we ourselves are building others up in the Lord. Amen? So tayo yung nagiging uh, encourager ng mga tao sa paligid natin. Are we edifying the church? Are we encouraging other believers? Are we encouraging them to grow in faith? We have been given spiritual gifts. I'm sure lahat po tayo may mga spiritual gifts. Iba-iba ang ating mga spiritual gifts, but these spiritual gifts are all given to us to edify the church, to build up other believers. Basahin po natin sa Ephesians 4.11 and 12, and He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. Yung katabi po ninyo ay ibinigay ng Diyos sa atin para alagaan natin to help, the, to help them build their faith up in the Lord Jesus. Amen. So, hindi tayo yung nakakapag-dismaya sa ating kapatid sa pananampalataya. But we should be the encourager. We should build up each other in faith. Pray for one another. Encourage one another. Show love to one another. Amen. Amen po ba mga kapatid? So, the intention of uh, ang dapat na intention natin when we come here to church is to edify our fellow believers. Amen. Hindi yung naghahanap tayo sino mga utangan kaya dito. No? Sino ba yung pwede kong ipag-pray? Sino ba yung pwede kong uh, ma-bless? No? Dapat ganun ang ating intention, ang ating motibo. Number three, so the first one is to be rooted in Christ, then to build up in Christ, and then number three, be strengthened in the faith in Christ Jesus. Or sa ibang salin, in ESV, it uses uh, to be established in the faith. So, we need to be strengthened with our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we say that we are already established in the faith? Can we say that we are already strengthened in the faith? A strengthened faith will stand firm and it cannot be shaken. So dumating man ang maraming pagsubok sa buhay, even we face a lot of challenges, we will remain faithful in our faith sa Panginoon. We will remain firm in our faith in the Lord. Come what, we, come what may, we will remain in the faith, knowing that the Lord is our refuge, even at times of troubles, even the times of trials in our lives. He is our refuge, our strength, our very present help in times of troubles. Amen? 
A strengthened faith will not be led away. It cannot be deceived by any false teachings like what the heresies infiltrated the church in Colossae. We cannot be deceived because we have a clear understanding of who God is as said in the Bible. That only through faith in Christ Jesus we are saved and have eternal life. And that what he have done, what he has done on the cross is enough for us to be saved. Hindi natin kailangan ng works to earn our salvation. Yes, we need to do good works, we need to do good deeds because it was the design of God for all of us. But we are not doing good works for us to be saved because it was already done by the Lord Jesus. His sacrifice is enough to, for us to be saved. Amen? And then number four, that leads us to point number four, to be thankful in Christ Jesus. If you have, if you have understand the love of God, the salvation of God in our lives, if we understand the supremacy of Jesus Christ in our lives, in light of the word of God, then we will be thankful. We should not, be, we should not stop thanking the Lord for what He has done. Sabi po ng NIV, we should be overflowing with thankfulness. ESB said, we should be abounding in thanksgiving. We should acknowledge that every good thing comes from above, came from our Lord, like what it says in James 1.17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lines who does not change like sh shifting shadows. We have a lot of blessings received from the Lord. The best is His love, His unconditional love that was given to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. That though we are unworthy, He sent His only begotten Son to save us from the penalties of our sins. He wants us to be reconciled with Him in eternity, to be with Him in heaven. If we're going to count all the blessings that God has given us. We should be thankful for God's love, for God's salvation. We must be thankful for the forgiveness of our sins. We must be thankful for the eternal life which God had promised to us for those who believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. We must be thankful for the Lord for adopting us as His children. We must be thankful with God because He had given us the peace, the joy that we are enjoying because we are in Christ Jesus. We must be thankful for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives, sanctifying us through and through, rebuking us, correcting us, guiding us every step of the way through Jesus Christ our Lord. Giving thanks or shall we say overflowing with thanksgiving? Or shall we say abounding in thanksgiving to God? Should be our appropriate response to the goodness, to the faithfulness, to the love of God in our lives. It should be the expression of our gratitude for what he has done for us. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Lahat ng bagay, pagpasalamat natin sa Panginoon. We thank God for our family. We thank God for our work. We thank God that we are here in Bahrain. We thank God that we are here in ANCF. We thank God for the person next to you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
We must be abounding in thanksgiving because it reminds us how much we are blessed. When we are in the attitude of thanks, thanksgiving, giving thanks to God at all times, we are being reminded how blessed we are. Amen? Lagi nating naalala, mabuti ang Panginoon, God is faithful, God is good all the time as we give thanks to Him for all the blessings He has given us. We thank God for the food that we have on our table. Amen? Dito, ang dami nating ulam. Dala-dalawa pa. Hatid sundo pa tayo, no, mga kapatid? We praise God and we thank God for it. Amen? As we uh, thank God, as we abound in thanksgiving to our God, it changes our attitude about the circumstances. Kapag tayo po ay lagi nagpapasalamat, we are grateful to God, it changes our attitude about the circumstances. The thing is, pag tayo pa nagpapray sa Panginoon, lagi lang tayo nagreklamo, prayer is not always asking something. Praying is also giving thanks to God. Amen? Baka puro tayo reklamo, puro, puro ano, puro bakit siya may ganun, ba't ako wala? But if we are thankful to God, mawawala itong mga ganitong kaisipan. It will change our attitude and we will appreciate what God is doing in our lives every now and then. Amen? We will not worry because our God is our creator, our sustainer, our savior, and we can depend and we can depend on him. We can trust him, we could rely in him for everything in our lives. Amen. And in conclusion, mga kapatid, like the Colossians, we all need to be encouraged and be reminded that as we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we must continue to walk in Him by being rooted in Christ Jesus to grow deeper in our relationship in Him and in His Word, to be built up in Christ, to know Him more and more, and to be like Him, to be strengthened or to be established in the faith, so that we could stand firm in the midst of challenges and that we could also uh, overcome those false teachings that we could not be uh, easily led away by heresies. By being thankful in Christ Jesus, abounding in thanksgiving, overflowing in thanksgiving in all circumstances, reminding us of Him who He is, reminding that God is our Creator, our Sustainer of life, the Head of the Church, Eternal God, how much we are blessed and changing our attitude about our circumstances. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tayo pong lahat ay, yung muko tayo po ay manalangin. Close in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God Almighty Father, once again, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, our Lord, we praise you, we honor you, and we thank you, Lord God, for your simple message to us this morning. Lord, thank you for reminding us today who you are and encouraging us to walk or to live in Christ. Lord, we ask for your grace that each of us should desire to be rooted to be built up in the faith. Teach us to do your will and to be thankful in all circumstances, glorifying your name in every aspect of our lives. We praise you and we glorify you, Lord God. All of this we ask and pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God.